good at that, but I don't know. Yeah, I saw that. You're listening to Inside Real Estate, your source for all things mortgage and real estate related. The show that brings you all the hottest topics and insights directly from those who know it most. Now sit back and enjoy the show. We are those that know it most. Paul Apostolakis. I thought we were those that sat back. I don't know. (laughs) Paul Apostolakis, Salvatore Cusmano. Bradley Weisgerber, we are Inside Real Estate. Thank you all for subscribing and listening and doing what you do. I wonder what people are doing when they listen to our show. Like, are they driving, you think? You, think you don't want to know that. Oh, boy. Nobody's doing anything salicious. Like I mean, salacious. people do weird shit when they listen to podcasts, man. Uh, do you do not, weird shit? I like, mean, usually I'm just driving. They're probably not listening to it. <laughs> yeah. I'm usually yeah. getting ready for the day when I watch your podcast. Yeah. yeah. So today we have, a, a, obviously, a, some really cool guests. Tara's been on the show. Tara's from Real Producers Magazine. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the publication and what that's all about. You guys have an event coming up next week, which we will actually be uh, doing our show live from yeah. the show, which we've never done. And I'm really interested to see how that works out. We've, uh, done, we've done live shows before. Yeah. This one's live. <laughs> I, I know, but it's not at an event. Like you're never oh, I see. Like, so we're going to be like, outside, aren't we? I don't know. I don't, I don't oh. really know what's going on. Lots of details. Yeah. We'll say in. Uh, it's, it's in the works. Deb will tell you. Yeah, <laughs> Deb actually transitioning right into Deb Houston. Deb is the event planner uh, extraordinaire, um, which, you know, is always is like whenever we do, we do an event and like we have like 15 people show up. It's like, fuck, man, there's a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> uh, and so I can't imagine like trying to coordinate events for a living. But that's awesome. So kudos to you, Deb. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. So. Um, transitioning first, I, I just kind of want to go into uh, first and foremost. I just want to shout out Chris, uh, Tara's husband, Chody, for not showing up. Um, <laughs> Man. Uh, oh, he, uh, I haven't talked or heard from him since I beat him in golf. Oh, uh, we're gonna call him Mr. Press because he kept pressing and pressing. He was down like a hundred dollars at one point. Oh boy, he pressed so much that they won the last hole to only be lose 10 bucks, but he still lost. I just want everybody to know that uh. specifically. <laughs> so, Chris, if you're listening, you're a coward. Uh, oh, so, oh, man. <laughs> uh, or call me, we'll play again, and maybe you can win your 10 bucks back. Uh, which, but by the way, he did yeah. pay me. He threw it through my window uh, as he pulled up <laughs> next to me, and he crumpled it up and threw it at my window. So that's oh, a boy. little little side story. Uh, Tara, Real Producers Magazine. Yes. Uh, just so the audience out there understands or doesn't know about Real Producers, it's a it's a magazine that is hyper local, but it's a national publication, basically. But what happens is every like uh, market potentially has uh, a magazine for their market, and in that market, you guys showcase the top 500. Is it or not showcase? But the top 500 agents in that uh, market get the publication. Yeah, anywhere from 300 to 500, got depending it. on the market. Got it. Um, so, and then what happens is, is you've got companies like Omega Lending, which is our, our mortgage company, that basically uh, pay to be part of the that pay for ads. Right. Yeah. Which helps support the publication and get it out to these agents. And, and it's a really cool publication because as a partner in the in the publication, we have an opportunity to not only be in that publication, but really, I think what you guys do really well are the events and the, the ability to network. Because a lot of these agents who are top agents, getting them all in a room to converse and actually like, get the, you know, a lot of people think that it's so cutthroat that nobody wants to like everybody's like fucking everybody like in that market. But everybody just wants to be cool with each other. Yeah. Right. So, so talk to me about the, the actual, I, I want to talk about the publication because it is across the country. So talk right. to me how you guys got involved and, and what, you know, what, you, what your thoughts are as far as the benefits of being in it. Right. So uh, Real Producers, it, it is a national company. It was started about four and a half years ago uh, with Remington Ramsey in Indianapolis. And currently across the U.S., we're in about 75 areas, uh, different areas, and by the by, next year, we'll be in 100 markets. Wow. So it has grown extremely fast, and really the goal of real producers is to build, and you'll hear me t- say this in every event and you know many of our videos, the goal is to build stronger relationships in the real estate community, to bring together the best of the best. So when you go to our events, it's you look around out, around the room and it's, you know, these top realtors that are from all different brokerages all coming together because in real estate, relationships are everything. Yeah. I'm sure you guys would agree. Yeah, absolutely. So I've ran into many people who have done deals with each other and then they've actually met each other for, for the first time at our events. Yeah. And in a lot of cases um, with relationships, someone might have a deal on a house and have all these different offers, 
but they're gonna they might choose a person they have a relationship with all day yeah. over someone else that they've never worked with. So really, I mean, I love what we're doing, yeah. and I mean, we're growing fast. Um, Chris and I own real producers of Oakland County and Wayne County here in Metro Detroit, um, right? Yes, in the area, and then uh, there's a few other. Uh, close by, we have real producers of Grand Rapids, right. which Jody Hawkins runs, and she does an amazing job over there. Um, and then also Allison Peters in Toledo, which isn't too far as well. For sure. So, yeah. um, so let me yeah. let me ask you this. So basically, so every so you guys have Oakland and Wayne County, and then there's you know Grand Rapids. So, but it is ultimately different because every single person owns their their, their it's area. It's a franchise. It's a franchise, yeah. right? Is there like a formula that is followed, basically? Yes. You know what I mean? Like, because, it, uh, you know, real producers in Oakland County might be different than real producers in Colorado, right? Right. Well, we all, I mean, it's a franchise, but the company, N2 Publishing, yeah. they do an amazing job with training the people that, they, they're not just going to say, hey, here you go, here's your area, and go, yeah. you know, do this. They, they have, we have, there's all these steps, it's like, they're handing you a manual yeah. in a way um, so that if you follow their program, it works. Right. And, um, you know, in the beginning, obviously, when you start something new, you're a little scared. Like, are people going to show to this event? Yeah. You know, like, I'm new in the area. I'm not even I, I don't I'm even have a real, real estate, estate background. Yeah. So it was a little, you know, it gets you a little nervous. But um, actually, Edie Franklin from Max Brooks said to me, at our at one of our events, she goes, Tara, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, You're so yeah. right, Edie. Like this yeah. feels so good. And people, you know, they they really like they really like to all come together. It is and, true. It is true. Um, you know, thanks to you guys for being a partner because because of the partners, um, we're able to keep the magazine free to the realtors. Yeah. We're able to feature the realtors for free. Right. So a lot of people don't know that. And then the events are free for them because of our partners. Yeah. So, you know, why not? Why not come? Right. You no. know? Mm-hmm. Well, that's why the... don't we get it for free? <laughs> no, because we have to pay for it. Because <laughs> well, you're not a real, a top real yeah. sorry. Yeah, we should create a mortgage magazine. Uh, nobody's going to read that. Nobody no. cares about it. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, it's, it is interesting because when, when you first started this, so you came, obviously, I mean, I, I've known you for some time, but you, get, you came to our office and you're like, we're doing this thing. And I'm like, all right, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and it's been, and I think, Sal, you can attest to this, it's mm-hmm. been a really valuable thing for us, even even though you know it does cost us money, to be yeah. fair. Well, I think it's a, a, a breath of fresh air when it comes to doing something like this, right? Like, all the time, people are pitching you, come on, you know, do our magazine, Royal Oak. Well, I want to yeah, slam yeah. magazines or whatever, but it's <laughs> like, all right, here's our money, and then it's like... There's no value. I mean, you're in it, right? And it's cool to, like, see it come to your door and you're in this like magazine right Right. but there's no like real value for relationships right that's like just advertising versus like being able to kind of have a foot into the community right and i think that it's great for us it's been great for our podcast too right Right. like because it's all like familiar faces and it's more or less making friends as opposed to just uh, feeding off people for business. That's that's the way we look at it, right? Right. Just building relationships. It, it is, it is uh, one of those things where, although we do pay to be in it, there's so much value provided. And, I, I, and some of your uh, partners, maybe they don't get that. You know, they, they don't utilize and it the right way. Parties are sweet. It's, they're fucking sweet. <laughs> they're at, like, really cool places. Yeah. I think <laughs> that, and, and speaking of that, so obviously Deb is a big part of uh, creating the, these events, but the events are really where it's at. So, like, being in the magazine as a, as a, uh, as, as a, um, uh, as a mortgage company, yeah, it's cool. But ultimately, it's the events. Being able to shake hands, meet people, um, everybody's in a good spirit. So, Deb, talk to us a about your background. How did why event planning? Because that seems like a crazy thing. Yeah, it is a little crazy, <sighs> but it's the best job ever. It's I get to be the party girl. You throw parties. I, yeah. I get to plan parties, yeah. and and it's a lot of fun. Um, working with Tara has been great. Uh, I, I'm new with real producers. I've been planning events for over 20 years. I got my start at the Michigan Design Center in Troy. Oh yeah, way back when. Yeah, and um, so this is this is a lot of fun. This is kind of my dream gig right now. Yeah. But that's um, awesome. Yeah, so this will be my second event with real producers. Um, the first one was at the Sapphire Luxury Home in that was awesome. Bloomfield, which was an yeah. amazing event. What I love about 
the the model that Real Producers um, does for events is we always find really cool, unique locations. That's that's a big key of yeah. it. Yes, it's always something different. Pressure, right? always something yeah. different, and you have to have something different. Otherwise, people are going to start getting bored. So you have to keep that that interest with different elements of the event. And yeah. So this one coming up in November, yeah. or it is November already, in next week already. Yeah. At the Detroit Shipping Company. Yeah. Just Which is a really cool the space. coolest venue, yeah. and and it's just going to have a completely different flavor to it. But it's it's going to be a lot of fun. That's so. awesome. So, what are some of the challenges when trying to plan these events? For because how many people do you guys get? Getting uh, a hold of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah getting <laughs> no. people to to RSVP. But um, yeah. no, getting people. I mean, sometimes. Uh, that was an inside oh, joke there. Oh, Dave from the podcast. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Will not return text messages ever. <laughs> yes. Dave, if you're listening, which he's not, but you, okay. Yeah, yeah. We Man, typically get between. between <laughs> all of a sudden, the feed just goes <laughs> dark. Yeah, all of a sudden, the flight's cleared off because it, it, it's watching the sun nest. Anyway, so, so yeah. So, I mean, how many people do you guys expect at these events? I mean, we generally get. Uh, you know, between 150, 200 people. That's a lot of our, people. Our yeah. last event at the Sapphire Luxury Homes, we had just under 200 people. Wow. And that event was actually a little tricky because we had, it was right on a main road. Yeah. So we had valet, but also we had a shuttle, shuttle people. Yeah. Like, actually, it was a yeah. party bus. A lot of logistics. But yeah, one. and it would shuttle people from a church. So yeah, there was a lot of things that Deb was a big help at. Yeah. Like, I honestly, I didn't even really think about the shuttle. And she's like, um, that's a lot of people. They're not going to fit in that lot and yeah. i'm like oh that would have been a nightmare. so go on you know get, get yeah. to it because realistically okay just to be fair um you know these top agents are pretty pretentious right they're not going to want to like not have something like if they had to like get there and there was something that was screwed up they're like screw this i'm going home right well, mm-hmm. right yeah, yeah we didn't exactly. want that yeah. Yeah. you got to make it convenient and yeah the one in detroit's pretty sweet we did get valet even though they have a big parking lot there is valet um because i know we're going to fill up that parking lot yeah and it's just a really cool venue. I mean, that place is, it's made of 21 shipping containers. Yeah. And it took them three years and $3 million to build that place. Wow. So it's really cool. Inside, they have like five different restaurants, a coffee and creamery. Whoa. They have Detroit podcasts. They have beach volleyball in the back yeah. for the summer. And uh, next week, you guys will meet, you guys will um, we'll have the owner chat That's awesome. on your podcast. And they're building a whole, they're expanding. That's so that space, it, or are they going somewhere else? No, that space. They're oh, expanding wow. to like business offices. It, it's a really cool, cool. space, like yeah. a WeWork um, space or something. Yeah, uh, I don't know exactly, but he can tell you details when you tune in next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, so that's awesome. So yeah, I mean, look, I mean, we've 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 been a part of the magazine, and then so now you guys started in Oakland County, yes, right. Um, and now you expanded to Wayne County, which is this event, right? Right, exactly. So talk to me about that because, uh, you know, realistically, those t- so everybody out in the world knows these two counties are, are really close to each other, right? You've Correct. Got, oh, they, t- they touch each other, yeah, basically. They're next yeah. to each other. Yeah, they, yeah, they they're are. They're the same, right? It's Metro Detroit. We've got really three counties in Metro Detroit, Macomb, Oakland, and Wayne. Right. So uh, is there is it is it odd being so close that you're going to have two different markets or two different magazines right next to each other, or, or can they sustain themselves? No, they can sustain – in. Let me just explain. Oakland County alone, you know, I live towards N- Rochester. So yeah. from one end to the other, it's an hour drive. Yes. I mean, it's a, hu- a huge yes. population in Oakland County. I mean, the that one goes, that's got the most realtor. And that county has the most. Real estate, yeah. Most real estate. It's probably, out of the three, it's probably the out most of, affluent. It, it is yeah, a very, affluent. it's the most affluent and the uh, most. Uh, it has, populated, too. Yes. Yeah. And then, um, yes, Wayne. So, like, our publication is based off where the realtor's offices are. Mm-hmm. So they could sell Oakland, Wayne, Macomb, but we Wayne is huge send it. Too. Yeah. In Wayne, I mean, you got Northfield, Plymouth, Canton, Detroit, yeah. Gross Point. Detroit's yeah. booming right now. Northfield to Gross Point is yeah. that's far. Well, yeah, yeah that's I basically live in Northfield. I'm in Novi, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right, yeah, you're right there. So, um, yeah, I mean, in, with doing six events a year, I think Chris and I are pretty set on just doing – Oakland and in Wayne. For right now, yeah. Um, yeah, forget you know. Macomb. No, nobody cares about Macomb. Yeah, sorry. I mean, maybe in the future <laughs> there the would way, be one, but not by us. Terry and I went to high school together. We, we grew up in Macomb. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I live in Macomb. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to me. You know, what's interesting about this is if you think about real estate, Brad, like. I try not to. It's all we do. I'm, I'm kidding. I mean, of course. Is, yeah. So if you think about real estate, just think about. The amount, and, and this is just very like like the amount of opportunities to create 
are living off of real estate, right? There's it's, so many different ways. It's such a huge, I think we forget just because we do the mortgage side and we do the real estate side, but the real estate in general is a, is a huge industry uh, in our, in massive. our world. It's massive, right? It, it touches so many different like sub industries. I don't know if that's a real thing or not, but that's what I'm going to call it. it so many different industries and, and professions yes. are influenced and impacted directly by buying and selling homes. Well, we're, and, we're I mean, and that's what, so realtors, I mean, for you guys as partners, I mean, realtors, they're the in, influ- influencers. Yes. yes. I mean, think about it. You move into an area, they're going to ask a realtor, where do you recommend to go, you know, for this, for that? Yeah. You know, they're, they're asking the realtor. So you guys are, I mean, the realtors are such a resource to the people in the community. They so. generate, so here's the thing, just so, and this is why we, we, as a business, as a mortgage company, we support realtors as much as possible. Um, because the reality is, you know, sometimes people look at the mortgage side of it as separate from the real estate side of it, and, you know, they don't get along, and some real estate agents look at the mortgage side as just a part of it, and almost like an annoyance, right? Okay, just get the deal done, right? But the reality is, it, it, real estate agents are out there generating leads and getting business and ultimately referring those that business to companies like us, they're f- so important in, in, in the real estate transaction. Like we built our business on the fact that we built good relationships from real estate agents, right? So I mean, right. and you know, it's not- Well, it's just where the people go first, right? Right. I mean, right. should they go to mortgage first? I mean, then we would be the most important. Problem. There is an <laughs> argument for that, but- But don't. the agents are actually out there, boots on the ground. Like they know the areas, yeah. they know the schools, they know this, right. they know right. that. So that's why they, Go to them first. They're like right? they, they're like yeah they're like front line. Right? They're out there like <coughs> they fighting are, every yeah. day. And then like for as a mortgage company, if you're not like thinking of real estate agents as like real partners, like and giving right. them value, like like there's no sense in like why would they why would a real estate agent work with someone right. and give them revenue and business if they're not supporting them? Yeah, I mean it's like they're a storefront, right? Like they have to have something or a, a product for each thing that is good right so whether it's just the mortgage or the title company or an inspector or insurance guy whatever right they have to have a full suite of things that that take care of that client because ultimately they're the ones who they talk to first and relying on them the whole way yeah right? yeah there's the real estate agents are super important in, in right. you know the thing about it, like you said south how many people get money from the real estate agent's potential referral, right? They're going to refer an inspector. They're going to refer this, uh, a mortgage company, a title company, like all these people. They just facilitate the the deal, right? But all these people are making money off what they're doing, you know, almost. Well, I I guess that's one way to look at it. It is. It's just more or less like a a necessity, right? It's not necessarily like about even making the money. It's just who's who's part of that that relationship, right? Who's part of that sphere? Yeah, yeah. So... Um, so I want to go into Tara's background a little bit. Because, oh boy. Yeah, yeah. So Tara, <laughs> I just because I think it's interesting because you know, I I don't know how you got into the mega. So we'll talk about that. I know yeah. Chris kind of got into it. I talked to him a long time ago, but you used to do Cutco. Knives. Oh yeah, I used to sell Cutco, Cutco nine years. Yeah. Hall of Fame. My walls in the in the factory. So my my face is in the factory on the wall. I, mm-hmm. I, I like I like you know you think about a Cutco salesman and you're like you know like that but to <laughs> make a living for it that is the from, best experience. Man, there is a dude who just kills it yeah with luke Cutco. in I the mean, area he just murders it yeah yeah so I, I, I tell you what anyone that does cut we're having our kids we, my husband's already trying to get tyler my boys to sell it, it was because such a good it, experience. it is like i mean i was i was there for nine years and chris was selling for 15 years At Cutco? We, yeah we both ran offices oh wow we both sold quite a bit he sold over chris sold over a million dollars in cutco that's why. So, but wow. I mean, by the way, anyone listening, I will tell you something. It. I didn't even know this it, was a thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean, state teaches it as a class. I mean, it. it they do? for what? sales experience. Wait, so I'm telling me, you what. That. Wait, don't you just? I don't know what they still do. They did. I don't know what they still do. Don't quote me on that. Okay. But I will say, it was the best experience as a coming out of high school. If if anyone wants to get sales experience, go sell Cutco because they have the best training. They teach you the sales process. Yeah. They you cold call basically. I mean, you're not cold calling. You start with your friends and family. Right. But you learn to get leads. Like I, I get excited because I, you I really love are it. Passionate I, about I am it, yeah. passionate because I 100 percent believe in what they do, and I 100 percent believe it as a gift because it, it is a gift people have forever. Really. And they have a forever guarantee. So people, 
when you buy it, she's like it is an investment. Right I know. Right? It's I an investment. Cut cut knives. Knives. Listen, I mean, I you need a good set of knives. <laughs> yeah. Right? If you cook at home and you do things, you need so a good set Even of if knives. you th- think about it, what else do you use every single day? Yeah. Right? I mean, think about it. You put your logo, Omega, on that, or inside real estate, whatever. You put it on a knife, they're going to see that every day. So for realtors, it, you Are know, they really superior any, knives? They're amazing. Yes. They are. All right. You, you, I can attest yeah. to that. Luke, yes. Luke, if Luke is listening, come here and do a demo for them because <laughs> I'm telling you. Really? Anyways, I can go on, but um, I do 100. It's great experience. Um, are those guys at like Sam's Club? Like They are. They are now. Numbers, they, they used to not. They're a free gift. Yeah. They, those, they, are, those guys? They are. Well, they are in Costco now. I don't know where else they're at because I've been out of the loop because I was a stay-at-home mom for eight years. And then Chris and I joined together to do real producers. Well, so I was missing, uh, you know, getting so out It's so interesting, there. right? Because, like, uh, if you think about their model, like, yeah. they have salespeople who make a lot of money versus just going directly to a retailer and selling knives, right? Right. But when you have someone push the same product, because, I mean, they're, I'm sure they're great knives, right? But they are. So are whatever knives you buy at the store, right? No, like, they're not. They're not the same material. <laughs> they're not the same well, quality. I mean, there's some really nice <laughs> knives out there if you go to the store and buy them, right? Jinsu knives, whatever, right? But, no, well, there's some German ones that's our, that's the yep. biggest competitor, but they don't have a forever guarantee like Cutco. Uh, okay. And Cutco's American. Are you made. still selling no, See, I can't out. help myself. <laughs> it's in my you, DNA. Do you, I did can you go sign on. A for a standard consumer, like, I don't give a shit, right? Like... Yeah, right. you get nice some knives, from, nice knife. Yeah. Uh, what are they? Westhoff knives or whatever? Yeah, they're they're so German knives. Yeah, those are really nice knives too. Yeah, and they do the same thing. They cut meat or vegetables or whatever, right? Like people aren't like thinking about like the forever. Yeah, you're not from thinking Cutco, about it right? until we come, no one knows come over. Until someone knows and sells it to you, right? Exactly. And it's just I mean, I like, go to Dollar Tree and get a freaking oh my chef's God, knife no. for a dollar, <laughs> no. and I can do that. Every six months for you're 30 all, years. Yes, you also you probably, <laughs> the only thing you're cut. trapping up no, at home no, no, is no, chicken no. nuggets. Hold I on a second. Don't if, you're, <laughs> if you actually cook, listen. I've, I've been, no, I do cook. No, you I, need I, nice I'm bringing, bringing you, Chris, we're going, we are going, bringing them a cuckoo knife. Yeah, we're going down the rabbit hole, though. I'm just saying, like. You need it, a good knife. It, people don't think like that unless someone sells them. Right, unless you see. Because cuckoo would just be another knife that people use, and it's a nice knife. But They come and do a demo. Yeah. Way more sales just from people pushing it. It's see, th- well, the reason I think it's interesting is because if you think of like a salesman, like a Kirby vacuum, right? It's probably a really good vacuum, right? But yeah. that, per- that that that's a tough gig, right? Cutco people are gonna be like, oh, you're, you're selling me Cutco because it almost has a like. Well, that it's cheap enough that people can give it as gifts, and that's the whole thing, right? Like you sell it to a lot of consumers. So Cutcos are not cheap. <laughs> Well, they're an it's investment. cheap enough. It's not like <laughs> they are an investment. But <laughs> they are. I'm it's like one hundred and fifty dollars for go scissors. Yeah, you know what? This is what God. I would tell people. I I'm mean, just saying that like businesses can yeah. do that and give a nice that. knife as a gift versus a Kirby vacuum oh, yeah. or whatever, 100%, right? Like, yeah. hey, here's don't a give knife. a vacuum as a gift. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no, no. But you no. give a really nice <laughs> chef's knife, right? Your wife, yeah, especially. But but then they're selling the knives. Right, essentially, right. or they're giving them to their clients, mm-hmm. essentially. But like, uh, so my whole my whole point, forget the knife. It's just funny. My, my whole point with this, my Where whole point with this, was that <laughs> I mean, Tara like busted her chops, and like I mean, I'm sure there was some adversity when you started selling Cutco knives, right? You had to overcome oh, a yeah. lot. Oh yeah. Which probably built you up to be able to do other things later on, right? I mean, that's really what my point with that is like you you chose to do Cutco knives, you you stuck with it for nine years, right? And you you had success with it. And then, so why did you stop doing the Cutco and, you know, other than, and then move into something else? Well, I, I had three kids under, under the age of two. Right. So when you have three kids in diapers, I had to kind of take a break. Jesus Christ. And, um, I was a stay at home mom for eight years. Why did did Chris switch from Cutco to doing the magazines? Well, actually, this is interesting. So the guys who created N2 Publishing, the publishing company, they were actually from Cutco. Oh, get out of here. Yeah. So a lot, um, I will say a lot of the people that do work for N2 have that Cutco background. Wow. Um, That's interesting. So we, knew, so we had yeah. friends that end up working for them. And we were kind of, you know. That's when you know you've got a good sales organization. When you've yeah. got spinoffs that are doing really well. That's really good, right? Well, you look at Quicken Loans. That's right? what I was going to say. Like yeah. Everyone yeah. at, not everyone, but a lot of people who worked at United Wholesale or Flagstar, or our mortgage brokers, at some point usually started at Quicken. Not yeah. always, right? And the, yeah. the success Or they the started Quicken. at another spinoff that, yeah. you know, just depending when you started. But so, yeah, because my, my thing is if you have great sales training, and by, by the way, 
people that are listening, sales doesn't have to be dirty. You can do good things and give people good products and still sell them, right? Yeah. You know, you can believe in your product and still sell someone. Well, but You, you have can only sell if you believe the product, though. And some people sell well, some you, bullshit. But no, if, you, if you believe in your product and you listen to your customer and yes. it's a fit, Right. The sales is easy, right? right. If it's right. not a fit and you're trying to push something that doesn't make sense onto someone, right? right. Well, that's, that's when sales is dirty. Right. Well, yeah. and even with real producers, it's like it's like a no brainer. What you're gonna go to? I disagree with that. I'll tell you why it's a no brainer. So when you walked into our office, it's <laughs> it, it, it's a, it's a long commitment, and we were early on in our in our in our business. And I I told Brad we just signed a I three was not year happy. I, we just signed a three year contract. He's like, excuse me. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's it's all right. It's gonna you know whatever. I go look, it'll pay off. You know what I mean? And but, but that's like a big commitment. It's like an unknown, right? Because you, you don't, don't know. You, you just don't got know, into right? it. Yeah, I think. But but I also think it is what you make it. I think as a partner, like you have to like make whatever you do good, right? It's up to you on some level too. Right. right? And you have to participate. Like if you're a partner of ours and you don't come to events, you're kind of missing out on a part of what we do. Of yeah. you know, there's so many publications out there, and you just advertise. There's no events. There's no social media. There's no, you know. To, you know all the extra things that we offer for partners there's yeah you know the, it's you easy could to write your, checks and pay or yeah. and pray right i like, mean all i right, get a we're ton gonna, of flyers in the mail you know it's right like, we're gonna do this and hopefully someone calls us right versus participating and putting in a little sweat equity mm -hmm. yeah so, and by the way i just want to mention real quick so just so that other like listeners are aware all of our partners that are with real producers are recommended by top producers in the area so we know, we don't cold call. We don't just get anyone in our magazine. Ah, so that's so good. when when and I tell every realtor and you know everyone that we meet with, so know that if you work with someone in our magazine, they were referred by other top producers. That's pretty good to know. So how the fuck know, do we get in there? Who referred us? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, that's that's really so the, the 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 event next week, Deb. What should people know about it? So it is Wednesday, November 13th from 1 to 3 p.m. at the Detroit Shipping Company, which is right in the heart of the Cass Quarter, which is a really cool up-and-coming area yeah. of the city. Is there um, alcohol? Absolutely. <laughs> That's a big question. Absolutely. Yeah, Free beer and wine. Local. Free? F well, for the... For the partners and oh. the, the realtors, yeah. You have the, to yeah, the people that go there on the list, you have to be on the list. So can we, well, we'll be drinking on the yeah, air. You have to register for sure. Yes, you have to register. Can you make sure um, people bring us alcohol while we're doing our show next week? Oh, I will absolutely yeah. bring you alcohol. All right. I'll yeah, assign so someone to you. Thank you. <laughs> thank but the you. the restaurants they have this really cool food court with all these very kind of eclectic Detroit based local food vendors, and that's the that's what we're going to have uh, available for the party guests. Will there be as Tony well. dogs? Uh, no, oh. I don't think there's gonna be cone dogs. It's, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. but it's you, a you really, really until cool you come venue. next week. Right. Yeah, it's an there amazing venue. But yeah. um, local craft beer, they do have an art gallery in the in the event space, so you're gonna be able to tour the mm. tour the facility and mostly connect and, and network with. It's pretty with cool. Other I mean, it, it, most of the, mo most of these events are really cool because you just end up talking to people, right? Mm -hmm. you just, it's it's really right. good. It's like yeah. and it's like oh, I've so I saw you, man. What, like and then you just end up having a conversation. So I think utilizing that. Network Network. I think as a real estate agent, that's super powerful because, like, if you're around really successful agents, like, yeah. you get stuff out of that, right? Right. Um, that's really good. Um, so and of course, the live podcast next Wednesday, yeah. Yeah. right on the stage in the beer garden. <laughs> yeah, right on the stage. We're putting you right up there. It's gonna be interesting. Re on stage. Yep. Yes. And she just said it four times. In the on the stage, it just, it just it, set in. It it is outdoors, but it does have a, a yeah, nice big heat tent that's covered. So. Yeah, just wear a jacket, just in case. And again, this is a private event. Like, I've had people email me or try to sneak their mortgage companies in. <laughs> you have to be a partner to come to these events. Yeah. And um, if you are part of the top 500 in Wayne County, you will get an email directly from Eventbrite from us uh, with an invite. Yeah. So uh, I think sometimes think all, people think, oh, we're, I'm just going to stop by and bring a few people. Well, th I'm sorry, that's not that's how, how we work. Right. I mean, if someone is interested in being a partner, we can chat with them. Right. But Are you um, taking more partners right now? Um, in some categories, no. Okay. Um, you know, there's a few categories we don't have anyone. Yeah. Like, I th I've had some people um, in Oakland County look for an organizer, someone mm. to organize or declutter. Uh, we have someone in Wayne County right now, um, but even like pest control, like that's yeah. something that I don't have yet. Um, so there's a lot of uh, value adds, right? Because it's a good network to yeah. be in. For example, a CPA, 
right? Right. Yep. A CPA. John Angel. Mm-hmm. Well, we, is, <laughs> they haven't done it yet. I don't know. They should though. We told them to do I'm it. Missing so, out. I do. I do appreciate that. Like, it's not like all mortgage companies. You guys like cap it up. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. there are some mortgage companies which I'm cool with, but like, it's right. not like because it'd be very easy. Every mortgage company would want to be part of it, right? Yeah, it'd be yeah. very easy to have 20 in there, but we don't right. because I mean, again, think about 20 businesses at an event. We don't want that. You yeah. know, we like it diversified. And again, our goal of these uh, e- these events is just to. Build relationships. Yeah, we don't want anyone being like, "Hey, how you doing? I sell mortgages." You know, like <laughs> I sell mortgages that's not <laughs> that's not what it's about. Um, so yeah. I think um, even for some partners that are newer in mm-hmm. whatever they're doing, just to realize like it's it's about relationships. It's not a sales. It's right, not it's yeah. not a sales opportunity. No. Like don't be passing out. It's not like a BNI. Yeah. So it, I think sometimes people probably even think when we do like our podcast, BNI? right? BNI. Yeah. Like, like I agree with that, that we're gonna be like. Afterwards, like put them in a corner, like, hey, you got to send us deals. <laughs> like, oh. that's just not. No, no, no. It's not no, how it we, works. That's not how you even get business. No, know? we made so. we made a decision very early on that like we we are relationship based, and if our podcast lives on its own, like th- like we talk about our mortgage company, but just because we what we do, but. The last thing any guest that comes in here that's a real estate agent that already has a relationship with a mortgage company, they're not going to come here if they know we're going to be like, hey, man, hey, give me some deals. Give me some deals, dude. Give me some. Right. I don't no. give, I don't give a shit give about that. I'll give you a deal. Yeah. If you give. No, we have one guy. <laughs> there was one agent in, uh, he was in uh, Gross Point, and we were talking to him. He's like, this is what he did. He like, he like looked at us. He goes, okay, you give me one, I'll give you two. Remember that? Really? Yeah, we're like, uh, yeah. They're like, all right, man, I'll see you later. Yeah. I'll never talk to you again because <laughs> that's not what it's about. So, um, all right, so we do this thing called Three Questions on, okay. our, on our show. Um, and they're totally random except for the first one. And we'll ask you both equally uh, so you can both answer them, Deb and uh, Tara. Um, first one is what scares you, Tara? And then we'll go to Deb. Ooh. What scares you? What's, oh what's, your, what's your fear? Mm. Actually, um, I don't drive on expressways. Is that real? Yeah, for real. Like, even if I go to Novi, I take Telegraph. I got in a rollover accident oh, in, shit. back in 2000, and it seriously traumatized me, and wow. I just I just avoid it. I've tried, and then I get a I get an anxiety or panic attack. You're and like almost like PTSD? It, uh, yeah, definitely. Oh, can wow. you be in the car? I can be in the car. I'm fine if someone else is driving. If I drive and I, I've tried and tried, I freeze and like my body is like No way. It's so so it's hard, you know, when I have to go somewhere far, I just take a little detour. My my actually my GPS is set to avoid expressways and freeways. No way. Wow. Yeah. That's Deb knows because I had her drive me around to some events. So, so how, what happened in the roller a- accident? Like, what, like you just. Um, there was five of. Okay. Do you remember when the Firestone tires yeah. were mm-hmm. blowing? So, five of us were in a car going to a Cutco conference <laughs> in Chicago. And um, right in downtown Chicago, a car, start, a car next to us started to like uh, turn its wheel right into us. And the girl that was driving jerked the wheel. The front tire popped, and all of a sudden you see the whole car lift up, and we we rolled three times. Um, the two shit. girls flew out the windows. That no one died or anything, you know. <laughs> but it was tough. No, though. it was crazy. Yeah. Like it flew I and by the way, the, I got to tell you this, and this is a good for anyone listening. I was okay. I was nineteen. Okay, I was the only one in the back seat wearing my seatbelt. And everyone the whole time were like making fun of me, like, "Oh, you're wearing your seatbelt. You're in the back seat." I'm like, "I don't care. I just feel better." And sure, I mean, sure enough, we get in a rollover, and I'm the only one where my head doesn't hit the ceiling, oh my and God. I'm actually mm-hmm. in my seat. So a lesson to everyone: wear your seatbelt. Oh, doesn't matter if you're in the front, the back, matter. where you're at. I mean, you never know when That's an accident wild. will happen. That's super wild. So wear your darn seatbelt. It saves lives. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. So wild. sorry, that was a little extended, but no, Deb? that was. A, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deb. Yeah, how do I top that? What scares you? Dude? Sorry. <laughs> Um, I don't have any major phobias. Um, I will say, however, I've, since being a mom, for some reason, flying's kind of a thing for me. That's funny. We I had love a, to travel, yeah. but getting on an airplane requires a little bit of uh, pre-medicinal mm-hmm. red church. wine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, um, pre-medicinal red wine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's the, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm fine once I'm up. It's taking off and turbulence and landing. And landing. And I gotta be have my headset on with music going. It's like you, yeah. Does not matter who's sitting next to me. I might be digging in, you know. I mean, look, 
Uh, you just I just went to Mexico and my girlfriend's the same way and like mm. I'm like, dude, like relax or I'm gonna move my seat. Like I'm gonna go somewhere. No offense. Yeah, <laughs> no, like, that, it's it's crazy. It's only been the last two years that it's been an issue, look, but it doesn't stop me from traveling. So I don't think I don't there's anything anyway. wrong with that. If you really think about it, there's this big metal object flying through the air at a, at 500 no, miles an hour. It is it's scary, but yeah. I guess just in and everyone's different, right? But as soon as I buckle in and that thing starts moving, you got no choice. I just Whatever's like I'm gonna on a happen train. is gonna happen. That's That's right. Right. Pretend I'm on a train. Whatever's gonna happen is gonna. That's happen. the whole thing. If that thing crashes, there's nothing. You, no, no <laughs> freaking <laughs> out or music or whining. Well, I think that's unless you got a fucking the problem too, though, is you've got you a no lot control. of time to think about it. If that yeah. plane goes down, well, yeah. when you're in a car, you can like pull off the road or whatever, you right? No like you have a little more. Yeah, it's a total control thing. Yeah, total control. Sounds scary. Sounds like start packing a squirrel suit so we can just jump out. But uh, listening to like super loud like Foo Fighters or something, and I don't hear Foo the Foo engines Foo. and the noises that the engine makes. You're it's, okay. Yeah. That's it the makes exciting a huge part. difference. I love the, that they got no, all the like the movies on there are great recently. The movie system. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, the that helps. Yeah. It's just like I know. I'm like, don't relax, land. Right. I'm watching yeah. this. Yeah. I hate when we start to land and then the the guys like we're making our approach to and you know Atlanta or whatever. You're like, dude, like you just fucked my movie up. <laughs> um, all right. Next question is: If you were on a uh, deserted island by yourself and you could only bring one item, what would it be? One item. Item. Yeah. One thing. Oh, my tea. <laughs> Are you serious? What, your fucking tea on a deserted island. <laughs> I say that because, like, okay, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I have my tea. You, that is my. Can you, can you rephrase that? This say, is can my. Can you rephrase that and say any more? What? Can you rephrase? I don't drink. I don't smoke anymore. Yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, that's like my one thing is my ginger jasmine tea that I make. It's ginger kind of my jasmine. obsession. Who are you? Are you serious? Well, I mean, ginger you do, dude, I'm like, you do need like to hydrate and have something. So I guess it's like not a, that's just off the top of my head. Okay. Oh, you said thing. You didn't say person. So it'd yeah, be yeah, like your jewel, Chris. You're out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Deb. What about you? Um, I think I'd bring a boat. Oh genius. my gosh! Yeah. I sh- I'm going with you. You'll be drinking the tea. She'll be <laughs> off the island in three She's weeks. She's the planner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's true. That is true. That is so. I'll be sipping exactly my tea. Exactly what you. Want. That's perfect. You're a great planner already. <laughs> Thank you. It's a great calling card. If I was on an island, I would bring a boat. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm a planner, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, if you could spend a week in somebody else's body, who would it be and why? Oh, Deb. Oh. You'd be dead? Boy. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want that. Trust me. Man. I, I mean, like off the top of my head, yeah. this is kind of random, but I would say Madonna because I've always loved Madonna. Madonna, okay. And like, what Madonna an interesting t- life, right? I yeah. mean, yeah. so. All right. Yeah, Madonna would so, be a good one. She's always been my favorite. Really? Mm. That's interesting. Okay. okay. <laughs> I might have to go with Trudy Styler. Who the, Who's that? Who the fuck is that? That <laughs> is the wife of Sting. And she oh, is an oh. actress. Lay, and she's, lay, lay. Sorry. It's a stink she's song. just beautiful. I've always admired her. She's in her mid 60s, amazing figure. They have a villa in Tuscany. They're growing grapes and making wine. It's, and she's married to Sting. You know, <laughs> not so bad. All right. All right. So, okay. So maybe you'd bring Sting to the <laughs> island. Yeah. What about you, Paul? <laughs> what about you? And Sting. What's that? What about you? If I oh, that's I've never had anybody do this. This is interesting. What do you mean? No one ever asked you a question? No, never. No. Cared. Nobody gives a shit what I th- what I say. It, who would I be for a week? Yeah. Yeah. So um, who would you be? I'd want to be the president of the United States for a week. Oh yeah. Oh. That's That'd what I'd want to be. Good. No, I want to see what that's like, and I want to see, like, what they know and what they don't know. Now, I wouldn't say maybe potentially this president, maybe like another one. But it, like I would want to live that life for a week just to see what it's like, personally. How about mm. you, Brad? I don't know. Go to South first. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, never, I've never, I've never had that. That's an interesting one. Yeah. I don't know. Like right now, I guess, like it, uh, on a live person, I think it'd be real interesting to be like uh, uh, Jeff Bezos, right? Like mm. see what it's like to yeah. run like Amazon. Yeah. Like, that'd be like yeah, insane, right? right? Like. We think we're busy and like Amazon would have a down week that week. You'd have to like maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. It'd probably I do some do some. Uh, what are the prime specials? You yeah, know? yeah, everything's <laughs> that special. We're having Black Friday, Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> <Yeah>. Wednesday. <laughs> uh, okay, Brad. What about you? Uh, I don't know, man. I'd be for a week. That was you'd, the question. You'd yes. be a woman, wouldn't you? <laughs> 
I don't know. He wouldn't leave the house for a week. You don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. That'd be Aaron Rodgers for a week. Aaron Rodgers, that'd be pretty good. He's pretty sweet. That'd be good. Yeah, that'd be good. You and him share similar under eye bags. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You're also uh, a big Green Bay Packers fan. Yes. Because you. That would be. Actually, that'd be fucking sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like the man. Um, all right. Well, Tara, if someone wants to be in the magazine, uh, or no, they they have to be nominated. So, but if someone wants to get a hold of you just to talk, uh, and how do they get a hold? Yeah, of you? Yeah, sure. If anyone, I mean, uh, yeah, any questions, or if someone's you know wants to chat about potentially partnering, or um, also if you want to nominate someone for a feature, reach out to me. Uh, we do have a few new features coming up after the new year. Um, one is called Behind the Scenes All Star. So if you have a, you know, all-star assistant or someone that is, like, behind the scenes, you can nominate someone to be featured That's starting awesome. the new year. Because we awesome. want to shine some light. We already have that, in, you know, uh, starting up. Yeah. Um, but my number is 586-615-8749. And my email is, I'll spell it, T-E-R-R-A dot C-S-O-T-T-Y, which is Chody. At realproducersmag.com. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> that's that's pretty good, the the behind-the-scenes all-star. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that's like who it's a good concept. keeps, uh, keeps right. the wheels moving, you know? Yeah. And, Deb, obviously, just so the audience is clear, you don't only do real producer events. You do other events. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Right. I'm, I'm a freelancer. I do mostly corporate, but I will do some social events, too, just n- not weddings, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> weddings are nightmares, dude. <laughs> no, but uh, I've been doing events for over 20 years, and like I said, I've uh, just started recently with real producers, but um, I, I very much appreciate the opportunity to... Well, build, it's an awesome build place my, to showcase. Build yeah. my business here. So, yeah. um, so give the audience your uh, number, which is going to be interesting. We'll talk about it. <laughs> yes. So my phone number is area code 585. Which makes no sense because uh, our area is 586. Yeah. So it's yes. just 585. Yes, I get it. And there was a yeah. lot of confusion about that. I uh, was living in upstate New York uh, yeah. outside Rochester Got for 12 it. years. So it's 585-727-3101. And my email is... D as in Deborah J, Houston H U S T O N. Oh, it's Huston. It's it's looks Houston. like Huston, but yeah. it is Houston. So DJ Houston Events at Gmail dot com. Awesome, awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, obviously, thank we'll be you. we'll be live, but we'll be like in a different place next week. Actually, like at an event doing our show, which will be interesting. So yeah. for yeah. anybody yeah. that wants Day to parade. So mark it in your Bye. calendars yeah. now. Next Wednesday, what one thirty? We're the, at one, the, yeah, live the live will podcast will be 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. Yep. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Jessica. Thank you for always just doing what you do. My pleasure. Switches and knobs and, and <laughs> turning people up and down. So, all right, guys. Thank you for listening. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Thanks so much. You've been listening to Inside Real Estate.